don't view it as a waste of time, energy, and money. It is an investment and it moved you forward. It paid its dividends. Think about how you're going to allocate those future dollars and energy and time to move you in the direction you're supposed to go. So don't let the sunk cost fallacy get you. Well, another Friday is here, which means it's time for another episode of The Pursuit. And so this is one I'm really, really excited about, which means it'll probably be one that doesn't get a lot of love. You know, you creators out there know how that goes. Uh, but coming to you live from outside again in the patio, this is the goal for the summer, so record out here as much as possible. Pause for a second. I hear the beautiful sounds of a great morning in Fishers, Indiana. Cool enough for me to bust out the uh, Pursuit hoodie that I'm working on for the fall. Um, not going to do any drops on the clothing store over the summer. Going to really ramp things up for the fall and have a few great drops um, and just slowly build this lifestyle brand to go along with all of the content and the message of pursuit. So really excited to dive into this. And I want to, you know, today's episode is going to be more, as you see in the title, uh, has to do with the sunk cost fallacy. And as a financial advisor, I spent a lot of time earlier in my career reading about behavioral finance and studying it. And I really enjoyed it. Um, it's an important part of the practice. I don't read as much about it, not that I know everything about it, but now that I understand the basics and the major biases that we all face when it comes to money, I can identify them with clients and there's less need to spend a lot of time reading, just more time observing and seeing what our clients doing and learning that way. But there is a bias that we all suffer from called the sunk cost fallacy. And I wanna talk about that today because it will find its way into your pursuit and it's an important one to be able to be aware of, to identify when you're falling victim to it, and then to know how to get through it. So today's kind of going to be more of a structure of a, well, what is a sunk cost fallacy if you don't know what it is? Um, what are some examples? Why do we do it? How can we avoid it? And then why is it important on your pursuit? So this is going to be more of a, a structured, um, as well as structured as I get, uh, episode. I have the notebook in front of me with tons of notes. So if you're not watching this, I'm showing you, I've got pages that I've written out. Um, and I usually, you know, I'm not going to read from it, not going to script, but I wanted to get the flow out of my head onto the paper so that it was there and then I can follow it as I kind of go through. So you'll see me reference the notebook from time to time um, because I want to make sure I hit everything perfectly. Uh, but I do think this is a very important topic to understand and be, uh, be aware of on your pursuit. So for those of you that don't know about behavioral finance or don't know about these biases that we uh, suffer from. And behavioral finance talks about from the finance, but these biases that we have apply all areas of our life, as you're going to see here in a minute. So what is the sunk cost fallacy? And I'm going to go to um, behavioraleconomics.com for the definition. So by definition, according to the professionals, the sunk cost fallacy is when individuals continue a behavior or endeavor as a result of previously invested resources. So simply put, that just means that we keep doing things because of the time, energy, and money that we have already invested in that thing in the past. We don't want to look at those resources as wasted and stop going forward with it so we put more time, energy, effort. You've heard the saying, you know, throwing good money after bad. That's basically the sunk cost, fa sunk cost fallacy. You've got bad money that you've put away on the side, and instead of just cutting bait and, and admitting that you are wrong, you keep on putting good money after it, adding to the waste, and eventually you're going to walk away from it anyways, and you will have invested more than if you just would have realized, hey, this isn't right, I need to go and move forward. So again, sunk cost fallacy is just not being willing or not being able to stop doing something because you're so tied to the amount of time, money, energy that you've already invested. You don't want to look at that as wasted time, wasted energy, or wasted money so you keep on going forward when you know the right answer is to stop. And it's not an easy thing to do. Um, we'll get to why we do it or why I think we do it um, and how we can get through it. But part of it is that's just the way that we are in engineered. That's the way we're hardwired in our brains is the pain of admitting we were wrong, the pain of looking at those funds or energy or time as wasted hurts. And we like to, we like to avoid pain. So it's easier to just keep doing what we've been doing because the alternative of admitting we were wrong or all those other things hurts more and we're going to avoid that hurt. Uh, but I will tell you, once you've done it once, it becomes easier. This is the art of pivoting, I think. 
Um, when you realize that what you're pursuing at that time is not right for whatever reason, then saying, all right, what's done is done. It's sunk. Those dollars are gone. That time is gone. That energy is gone. I'm not going to be able to get back. It is sunk. It's at the bottom of the uh, you know, imaginary ocean, if you will. Let me not sink more of it there. Let me take my future energy, time, and dollars and dedicate it towards something that's going to move me in the direction that I want to go. And that's going to be one of the things we're going to talk about in a little bit. Let me give you an example from a money standpoint of what this looks like. Um, because if you didn't know the definition before, you certainly have done this before and experienced before. But let's just say you make an investment in a, in a stock. So you pick a company that you like, you put a lump sum in, and then you start putting money in every month. And after six months or a year, it's clear that your investment thesis was not accurate. You were wrong. Uh, it's not going to go the direction that you thought it was going to go. And you have a decision. Do you cut ship, cut bait? Do you sell what you can get at that point and take those funds and put it into a more diversified fund that has a better chance of getting back to growth and moving forward? Um, or do you double down and average down and put more money after this stock that clearly you know at that time is not going to do what you thought it was going to do? And it's hard to admit that you were wrong. You got the investment wrong and sell. One, we don't want to lose money. So the thought is, well, as long as I don't sell, I haven't lost it. Maybe it'll come back. And a lot of times we know it's not going to come back, uh, but we want to put more money at it to try to give an opportunity for it to recover faster. When chances are you're probably better taking whatever you can get at that time, putting it into something that's a little bit more diversified because diversified investments tend to, over the long time, do better than this individual stock if you get the stock wrong. Um, it is very possible to get the stock right and blow a diversified fund out of the water, but um, in this situation, this example, uh, you're probably better off going to something more diversified and then putting your future dollars into that fund um, for the long term. Now, it's not investment advice, just an example. Um, another example of throwing good money after bad money is when it comes to education. Let's say you get into a graduate program or you get into a certificate program for your profession and you're in it, you've, you've paid the money to get in, you've bought the books, you've been studying, you've been going to classes, and deep down you know that that thing that you're studying for does not align with what it is that you want to do. It's not aligned with your pursuit. You're just doing it because you were supposed to do it, or you started out doing it, and then when you realized it wasn't right, you think, well, I've put in the money, i put in the time, I'm going to see this thing through. Well, to see this thing through, there's probably going to be more money that needs to go into it. There's definitely going to be more time that needs to go into it, be more energy that needs to go into it. So are you better off finishing this program uh, because you, st you started out to do it and you invested into it? Are you better off finishing it, knowing you're never going to use it, knowing it's not going to move you forward on what it is that you want to do? Or would you be better off saying, all right, I, I went down this, it wasn't right. I know I've invested money in there and time and energy. I can't get those back, but I'm not going to put more at it because it just doesn't move me in the direction that I want to go. I'm going to stop today and I'm going to allocate those dollars, time and energy towards something that's going to move me forward. And maybe at the time you don't even know what it is yet, but you're just not going to continue to put towards that um, outcome that doesn't move you where you want to go. Now, that's not to say that education is not important. It's not to say that, that that certificate or that graduate program may not come to be a benefit down the road. There may be some benefits from it. But again, in this example, if you know it's not right, deep down you're like, I don't want to do this. It doesn't help me move the way I want to go. And the only reason you're not stopping is because of what you put in before. That's when you need to cut, cut, cut ties with it. It's not, okay, maybe this will help me in somewhere else. I just don't know. Then keep going. But if the only reason keeping you from stopping what it is that you're doing is because of what you've put in before that moment, that sunk cost fallacy pulling at you and you probably should just accept it and move forward. And while the money examples are important and you should be aware of those, I am more interested in the time and energy space because that is where a lot of sunk cost fallacy comes in that we don't even think about because you can't measure your time and energy. I mean, you can, but most people aren't tracking their hours spent all day. Money you can track. You can track how much you've invested. You can track how much you might have lost. You can track how much you may have gained. You can track all that. Time and energy, it's harder to track. It's easier to give that away and waste it on something that's not moving you in the right direction. So let's think about where these things show, the, show up. It could be with people, relationships. I've been a friend with this person for 10 years, 15 years, five years, two years, whatever it might be. I've been a friend with this person for a amount of time. 
know, I've dedicated myself to them. Um, I've built this relationship. I don't want to give up on that. But if there's somebody who is pulling you down on your pursuit, if we go back to talking about frequencies, if you are a person of high frequency and this is a person of low frequency, there really is no reason for you to keep that person in your life, especially if the only reason to keep them in your life is because of the relationship prior. You may have been a low frequency person when you met that individual. So at that time, that's why you guys were on the same wavelength. But as you elevate yourself and they stay down here, you can't force them to elevate up. They had the opportunity to rise with you. They chose to stay lower. And you shouldn't keep those people who are going to be a detriment to your progress in your life just because of the friendship before. Those memories will always be there. I'm sure there's great memories. It doesn't mean you have to hate them. It doesn't mean when you see them, you can't talk and catch up, but it doesn't mean that you need to keep them as a close friend just because of the, the long-term relationship that you had prior. That is in the past. That relationship is the past. You don't want to live in the past. You will actually live in the present, but also you want to be thinking about the future and positioning yourself to go where you want to go on your pursuit. So it could be people, could be careers, well, I've you know, been here, I've had this many uh, promotions and I'm on this path to whatever level of, of leadership or whatever it might be. But again, if it's not what you really want to do, would you be better off putting your efforts towards getting an opportunity that moves you where you want to be, where your passions lie, where you're going to make the biggest impact on your career and the people that you're, you're serving, where are you better using your time? So we've got people, we've got careers, but also just things that you do. Like, what are the things that you're doing that you've always done that you don't want to be doing? And why aren't you doing them? And if it's because of the investment that led up to that moment, that sunk cost fallacy, and you really need to pay close attention to it and really have a heart to heart and say, all right, I understand the reason I don't want to change this behavior um, or this, this lifestyle or this group of friends is because of everything that led up to it. The past is keeping me going to it. This is sunk cost fallacy. Do I really want to stay with it or am I, you know, am I slowing myself down because of my inability to let go of the past and move myself forward? And it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but I do think when you are able to identify it, it becomes easier to start to rectify it and move forward. So why do we do this? Well, one, in some situations, we have to admit that we were wrong. Going back to the investment, we picked the wrong stock. We should have just gone into a fund. It hurts to admit that we're wrong. It bruises our ego. This is where we need to separate our ego from ourselves and say, hey, it's okay to be wrong. And if we go back to past episodes of The Pursuit, I don't believe there are any failures. Everything has a reason. There's a lesson to be learned. So the lesson learned in that example is I got the stock pick wrong. Maybe my investment thesis is flawed. Maybe I'm not a good stock picker. Maybe I don't want to dedicate the time that I should have been doing to catch that wrong investment earlier and move to something else. Maybe I need to be an investor that is a little bit more on the passive side or more on a diversified side. Again, not investment advice, example. But it, it hurts to admit that we're wrong. We always want to be right. Uh, but as soon as you can admit that you made a mistake, then you can go to correct it and you can move forward. So it hurts to admit that we're wrong. It's one of the reasons we, we fall victim to sunk cost fallacy. We worry about others, what others think. Who cares what other people think? I know that is a uh, hard thing to, to overcome and get past. But it's an important thing to understand. We've talked about it in the past. Dr. David Roney, shout out to a former guest, said, fuck the haters. Don't worry about them. If you're worried about what other people are going to say and that, you know, well, why are you going to leave all of this money that you invested or time that you invested or you went through this program? Why would you leave that? Like, you're stupid for doing that. It doesn't matter what that individual thinks, no matter who they are, because it's about you and your progress and your pursuit and your life. They are not living your life. They may be falling victim to sunk cost fallacy in their lives, and they don't want to see you doing what they're not able to do. Remember, everything that we see in other people, with the way we feel about other people and the way people feel about us, is actually reflections of ourselves that we don't like or we're, we're judging ourselves based on what that other individual is doing. So their desire for you to not make a change that's better for you is not because they don't want you to do well. It's because it's something about themselves. So don't worry about what other people think. I mean, if you go two out of four years in a degree and realize that's not it, don't worry what people say about you changing your mind. Perfectly okay. It's your life, not theirs. We don't want to hurt others. Going back to the friendship relationship, we don't want to hurt other people's feelings. And while we have to be aware of others, we have to treat other people well, there's a way that you can go about making these changes without being cold-hearted. 
It's not your job to make other people happy. You can't make other people happy. And this is something I had to realize over life. It's just that I can be a good person. I can treat people well, but me myself is not going to make somebody else happy. Um, they have to be happy with themselves. You know, that high frequency, low frequency relationship, you can't force that person to elevate. And as you were elevating, they saw it and you were talking about things and they chose to not elevate with you. You're never going to force them to do it. There might come a point where they do it on their own and maybe that relationship comes back. But you can't let the fear of hurting other people keep you from making a change that's going to be better for you. Now, it's all in the way that you do it. Don't go about it in a, in a jerky way. If you go about it in a way that is respectful and honest and transparent, then you can go on and move forward with feeling good about yourself because you didn't do them wrong. You were doing what's right for you. It just happened to mean that there had to be a change in that relationship. So hurting other people, don't go about making the change in a way that will intentionally hurt somebody. But if you do things the right way and you do it with honor and they want to have heart, hurt feelings about it, that's not on you, that's on them. And the final thing is it's hard. It's not easy to do it. Uh, again, we're wired to not do these things, so it's not an easy thing to do. How do we avoid it? Or how do we make, how do we identify it? Well, first off is just having the awareness. So understanding that, hey, I want to make this change, but the reason I'm not is because I'm tied, I'm anchored to these things in the past. The investments that I made, I don't want to waste that time and energy. Well, it's already gone. You can't get it back. So don't, if you're viewing it as a waste of time in the past, what's it going to be in the future? It's going to be a waste of time in the future. Don't waste that future time or the present time if it's not right. So awareness, understanding when you identify it, being able to have a you know a heart-to-heart -heart talk, being able to journal, being able to talk through it. Another thing to help avoid, knowing where you want to go, knowing who you are, knowing your authentic self, knowing what it is that you're pursuing so that you can identify if these things that you're doing in your life, these people are right for that pursuit. And if they're not, then it becomes a little bit easier to say, all right, this doesn't move me in the direction I want to go. I'm going to get rid of it. Understanding who you are, where you want to go is important. And a lot of us don't. So having that understanding is going to be important as well. Believing in yourself and not worrying about what others think. That self-confidence, that trusting your gut is going to lead you in the right direction. Following your passions is going to lead you in the right directions. Having that confidence in yourself is going to help you when it comes time to making that final decision. So being aware, getting past what other people think, and then having confidence in yourself is going to help you finally make that decision. So identifying it and knowing what you're supposed to do is only half the battle. Actually taking action is the other, and the confidence will help you take that action and move forward. And once you do, it'll be a big sigh of relief. You will wish you would have done it sooner. Trust me. Have an accountability partner. That will help out as well. Have somebody that you can confide in that's on that same frequency, on that same wavelength that can hold you accountable. Hey, you know, you said you were going to do this. You didn't do it. Why not? You're falling victim to sunk cost fallacy. Quit doing that. Let's go do it. Having somebody who can, you can confide in, who will support you and be the person who will push you forward when you need it because it's hard will be helpful as well. And then finally, just being honest with yourself and being grace, providing grace for yourself and being forgiving. It's okay that you made that decision in the past. It's okay that it didn't work out the way you thought it would. Don't beat yourself up for that. Not forgive yourself, but be forgiving of, uh, of what it is and be understanding that you didn't know because this ties into why it's so important. It's so important because part of your pursuit is going to be exploration and experimenting. You're going to go down paths that your passions are leading you that may not be right. You have to be able to be aware and identify that and be able to pivot and come back to the original path and go keep going forward. And realizing that, that that time spent, the energy spent, even some of the money spent on that experimentation was not wasteful. You learned something from it. You learned what you didn't want to do or maybe you learned something on that path that you can take on the other path that you're going on your pursuit. I don't believe your pursuit is a straight line. I know that my pursuit ends somewhere up there but I don't know what path. I don't know if I'm zigzagging. I don't know if I'm angling. I don't know if I'm essing. I'm going to give myself the freedom to go do all of that. And as I make these moves, I'm learning along the way. So that is going to happen on your pursuit. It's not a straight line. And you have to be able to go one direction, learn from it, realize it's not right, come back and go and not beat yourself up over it, and not stay on that path too long. So sunk cost fallacy is going to present itself a lot on your pursuit being able to identify it and control it and not have it hold you back is going to be important. So that's my talk on sunk cost fallacy. It's going to be there. You need to be able to identify it, give yourself the grace to uh, admit that the past wasn't what it was supposed to be and it's okay and move forward learning from it. 
So don't view it as a waste of time, energy, and money. It is an investment and it moved you forward. It paid its dividends. Think about how you're going to allocate those future dollars and energy and time to move you in the direction you're supposed to go. So don't let the sunk cost fallacy get you. All right, we're flashing on the battery, so I want to get this done before that ends and the video ends. So thank you for joining me uh, on my pursuit. As always, it's an honor to be a part of yours. Stay tuned. I've got some new content coming out on a new platform uh, before long. It's actually ready, but I want to get a, a good launch for it. So there'll be more pursuit coming to you uh, and another place to find it as well. So thanks for joining me on your mind. Always an honor to be a part of your pursuit, and let's keep pursuing.